Good morning guys! Welcome to the start of another weekly vlog. I am not going to sit here and pretend that it is Monday because it is Tuesday. Monday got away from me. I didn't vlog anything yesterday because I didn't do anything yesterday. I mostly just slept. It's pretty hot down here right now. It's like 80 degrees which to me is hot. And I don't function well in the heat. I mostly kind of just shut down. So I'm hoping for a little bit cooler weather these next few days. So today I have to go get a pre-op physical. Basically whenever you have surgery you need to see a doctor for a physical beforehand just to make sure that you are fit to have surgery. Usually this would be done in your primary care office or with a doctor you are seeing regularly but because I am not at home I don't have a doctor like that down here. I do have a pre-op workup from one of my doctors at home, but unfortunately it needs to be within 30 days of the surgery. And as it stands now, it'll be 32 days. And so the insurance is saying that it won't take that. So whatever, I have to have another physical done. But we actually have had quite a bit of trouble finding someone who would do it. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go to an urgent care center and have them do the workup. But apparently not every urgent care center will do this, so we've just been calling around lots of different places. Most places don't do it. So we did find one that said they would do it. Hopefully we won't get there and they'll say they can't do it. That would be the worst. I'm not super thrilled about going to an urgent care, honestly, because I'm afraid that I'm going to like pick up some kind of bug. It seems like everyone's sick right now and I've just been kind of quarantining myself so that I don't get sick, especially right before a big surgery. But now I have to go hang out in a waiting room with probably like 20 people with the flu. But whatever, it is what it is and I will do what I have to do to make this surgery go forward. But I will definitely be wearing my mask. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that was kind of a bust. We did make some progress though. Uh, the doctor who was on call, she looked at my history and my medications and said that she really just didn't feel comfortable um, clearing me for surgery because she wasn't really familiar with any of the conditions or the medications. Fair enough, I totally understand. She would basically be taking responsibility for me if something went wrong after surgery or I needed this or that, she would be the one that would be called and she just doesn't feel comfortable with that. And we totally respect that. Well, let me put my seatbelt on, hold on a second. She was able to give us the phone number of a doctor that they think will be able to better handle my case. Uh, we will be calling them first thing tomorrow morning. Hopefully that works. If not, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. I feel like it should be a little bit easier for people who are out of state to get clearance for surgery, but I understand that I'm a complex case. I think that sometimes we forget how complicated we really are because we're just so surrounded by this and this is our everyday life and we're used to this we kind of forget that there's a lot of things going on and a lot of things that could potentially go wrong so we will just have to see how this other guy works out luckily we are starting this process a week before surgery and not like two days before surgery because that might probably be a disaster just really a hurting now it's so hard, you know, to be running around to all of these different doctors every single day, sitting up in the waiting rooms and waiting. It's just hard. It, it's painful and it's tiring. It kind of just stinks that nobody wants to take on EDS patients. And I get it, and we are super complicated, but the woman we saw today, I mean, <laughs> bless her, but... She just kept calling it EDF, and I kept correcting her, and she like, didn't get it. She just kept calling it EDF. It just kind of stinks having a condition that nobody knows about and nobody wants to take care of. 
nobody should be treated like they're not wanted. And that's definitely one of the biggest reasons I'm so passionate about advocacy and raising awareness. Improvement can only come with understanding. Now we still have not found a solution to my problem with my pre-op physical. We are still working with the office and we called the number that the urgent care center gave us. Hopefully they will call us back. I think if worst comes to worst, the hospital can do it. I don't think that this is going to cancel the surgery. I just want to get it done and I want to get it done right. And I feel bad that I'm like harassing my surgeon's office trying to figure this out, but I guess they're probably used to it. I don't know, fingers crossed we can figure this out. Hi guys, so today is kind of a really hard day for me. I'm going through a lot of personal issues that I really didn't expect to be having to go through, especially right now, and I'm feeling pretty disappointed and hurt. So I decided that I'm going to take a couple days off of vlogging. I'm not really ready to talk about it, so in this situation I would really appreciate if you just gave me a little bit of space and didn't try pointing any fingers in the comments and stuff like that. I really appreciate how supportive you guys always are. It means the absolute world to me, but I just wanted to be kind of honest about what's going on and why I'm not going to be vlogging for the next couple days. Thanks for understanding. Oh, but the really good news is one of my doctors back home was able to write up a pre-op physical and history, so I will not have to get that done down here, which is a huge load off of my chest. So I am officially set for surgery on Tuesday. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi guys, it's Saturday now. I'm feeling good. I took a couple days off. Life goes on. Mostly, I actually really just missed vlogging, so I'm glad to be back. Today, I wanted to test out one of the funniest looking things I have ever purchased on Amazon, and that is this. It's called a hair funnel. I get a ton of questions about hair care in general with EDS and with mast cell, but recently I've been getting a lot more comments about hair care with a cervical fusion or spinal fusion in general, really. So I started researching tricks and tips. I've had these surgeries before, but for some reason I can't really remember what we did. But I came across this crazy looking thing on Amazon. It was $5. It was available for Amazon Prime. So I figured why not try it out. I don't really have very high hopes for it. It's pretty funny looking. But hey, I have like a lot of hair. So I'm willing to try just about anything. This could be a major disaster. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, first impression was I haven't even tried it. My hair is definitely way too long for this thing. I'm pretty lucky to have fairly dry hair. My hair doesn't really get greasy very easily, so I don't have to wash it every single day. Right now, it's really greasy because I put an oil treatment through it. I'm just trying to get it ready for surgery. But in general, I don't really find myself needing to wash it all that often. But I definitely have to wash it sometimes, so we'll see if this helps. Okay, so I have switched over to this Philadelphia color. Number one, because it's a bit more rigid, and number two, because I don't really care if this one gets wet. I don't know if it's waterproof, but if it gets wet, it's not a big deal. The other one's a pain in the neck to try out. <laughs> a pain in the neck. The reason I don't wear this color all the time, though, is because it gets extremely uncomfortable pretty fast. And it's almost impossible to talk in it. As you can see, I can't really open my mouth. I'm just going to brush up my hair first. Okay, I'm going to set you right there. Um, 
We're trying this out before surgery because after surgery, I'm not allowed to get the incision site wet for I think about 10 days after surgery. And then I think I can't have product on it for two weeks after surgery, which is kind of a long time. And you definitely want to wash your hair, especially after this type of surgery. There's usually a lot of antiseptic and blood stuck in your hair and you just, you want to feel clean. And it can be really hard to wash just your hair because you can't bend your neck, especially for me because my entire spine will be fused. So it's not like I can bend over backwards over a sink or something like that. So we're trying to come up with a way to wash my hair afterwards so I can remain upright while we do it without hurting my neck. And obviously we want to know if it's going to work before surgery so we don't accidentally get all my bandages wet or something like that. Right now I just have an oil treatment all throughout my hair. I'm trying to give it a little bit of extra hydration before I go into surgery. So it is really gross and I guess this will be a good test to see if this method works. I did have a tiny bit of leaking around my ear, maybe the seal wasn't just right, but since I had the towel around my neck, it was totally fine. Another thing is it did leave a red mark on my forehead, but I think that will go away with time. My neck is dry, my neck brace is dry, my back is dry. I really kind of can't believe that that worked. Five bucks. All I did was I have this bath pillow that has suction cups on the back and I just put it up against here with some towels and I lean on that. It was quite comfortable. Um, another option would be if you have a shower chair, you could put the shower chair inside of the bathtub or shower and have someone pour water through it that way. On the package it showed a woman in a chair in front of the sink and they did it that way I guess. I think she was actually in a wheelchair but I don't think that a wheelchair would actually work very well with the sink, unless you had a standalone sink. If you have any kind of cabinetry underneath your sink, I don't think you're going to be able to get the wheelchair close enough to the sink. The wheels will just get in the way. But if you can find the right height chair to use with your sink, I think that could work. We couldn't find the right height, so this was just the best we could come up with. and. It worked. I'm very surprised. I'll put a link to it down in the description and if you guys are interested it was five bucks like I said and I got free shipping so that was really worth it. Good job. You did good. Oh and if you guys were wondering which products I used, all I used was this Curly Whirly shampoo from Lush. It's a very thick shampoo. It's got a lot of coconut chunks in it and then I just used Veganese conditioner from Lush as well. It's funny, I do react to a lot of different scents and products, but there are some that I can tolerate just fine. Usually the more natural products and the more natural scents. Uh, these ones are like a coconut and a citrusy, and they don't bother me, so. Definitely my go-to shampoo and conditioner. I've been repurchasing it for years. <laughs> this is what the Curly Whirly looks like. It looks kind of gross, but it's a very thick paste, and I like that because I can control it better, so you never have it running into your eyes or anything like that. The only thing is, sometimes you do kind of have to brush excess coconut shavings out of your hair afterwards, but that's worth it. Upon closer inspection, my shirt did get a little bit wet down the back. And I think that happened when my mom poured the water a little bit too quickly and I think that it wasn't able to funnel through fast enough so it kind of built up and then leaked a little bit. 
I don't think it's enough that it would ruin your bandages, but if you do try out this method, I would just make sure that you pour the water slowly and are making sure that it's draining. I still would recommend it though. It did work really well. Happy Easter, everybody. It is so beautiful out today and I feel so incredibly lucky to be able to sit out here and enjoy it. You guys have probably noticed that I've been doing a bit better this week and I definitely owe that to the fact that we basically doubled all of my nausea medications towards the end of last week. It doesn't really stop the vertigo or the dizziness, but it does help to just take that edge off of that nausea. This is actually our third Easter in Maryland. We were home last year, but the two years before that, I was here having surgery as well. So now we have a bit of like a little Easter tradition going, where we come and just sit out on the deck and enjoy the day. We had a really, really lovely Easter, didn't we? Yes, we did, sweetie. <laughs> and now we're just cuddled up on the couch. Somebody has seen Easter Parade one too many times, so we decided to switch it up and we're watching Jesus Christ Superstar. Thank you guys so much for coming along on another week with me. I'm going to close out the vlog here. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow as I start to get ready for surgery. Bye. You want the crust. You're the great Jesus Christ. Prove to me that you're divine. Change my water into wine. That's all you need to do.